welcome back to another KeyShot tutorial. In this video, we're going to discuss a brand new feature in KeyShot 11, and that is the CMF documentation tool. Let's get started. For anyone unfamiliar with a CMF document, this is something used by designers and factories to communicate the color, material, and finish of a product. Typically, a CMF document will contain an image of the product with callouts pointing out important material information. It is a very important step in the product development process that can now be made easier with Keyshot's CMF documentation tool. The scene that I have open here is a demo scene available in the welcome window. It's already been filled out and ready to go, so if you would like to follow along with this video, then definitely go check that out. All right, to start off, the CMF documentation tool is broken up into two sub features. So we have the material information manager and the setup callouts window. It's important to start with the Material Information Manager, which is located in the Tools menu. This is where all of your material information will be stored. Upon opening, you'll see Keyshot will automatically bring in the material name, but you'll need to come in and add in any other information that you would like. Information can be added either by library or by project. If you choose to edit an entire library, the information you enter will be stored within each material and accessible from any Keyshot project. This is great for shared libraries or materials that may be used often or by multiple people. Alternatively, you can add material information by project, so that'll be only to the materials within the active scene. Keyshot will populate this list here with the materials that are currently being used in your scene. And if we take a look at the top of this table, you'll find the default properties that are provided by Keyshot. To add information to these properties, it's a simple double click and type into that field. For properties like reference image, a double click in that space will launch a second window where you'll be given the option to add a rendered thumbnail of your choice. So this is a thumbnail generated by Keyshot, or you can go in and add a custom image from outside of Keyshot. And we'll go ahead and add a custom image, something like that. And that's it. And if you find that you need more properties than provided here by default, you can open the Material Information Schema Editor from this settings icon. And then within here, you can add, remove, or hide properties. You can also switch the type of input field to either text or image. And if you remember that reference image property that we just looked at, you can see that I have that set to image. All right, let's say for example, I need to add a column for price. I'll hit the plus icon and title that price. And then right here is something to point out. When a schema has not yet been saved, you'll see an asterisk right next to the title. So just make sure to hit that save icon whenever you've made changes to your schema. Let's close the schema editor and check out our properties table. And right there, you can see price has been successfully added in. And now we can go in and add some information to that property. And if we go back to the Material Information Schema Editor, we can now freely switch between our custom schemas and the default. And using Material Information Schemas is a great workflow method for preparing and storing different types of CMF documents that require different material information. Cool, so we have all of the necessary material information in here, and this is all the same material information that you'll find if you're looking at the demo scene from the welcome window. Uh, but I can go ahead and close this window and just continue working in my scene. If I need to make any changes at all to those properties, I can always revisit the Material Information Manager and make those changes. Great, so we'll officially get out of that window and just check out the scene real quick. It's pretty straightforward. I have my shoe, it's materials, some of which are multi-materials, and a couple saved camera views. And at this point, I'm ready to output my CMF documents. I'll head over to the render window and navigate to the new CMF tab. This tab will look familiar. It comes with all the same settings that you'll find in the still image tab. The only difference are the top three settings. The orientation of your final document can be set to either portrait or landscape. We'll look at examples of those in a bit. And this checkbox here is checked on by default. This means that my final CMF document will only show the materials and parts that I've selected in the setup callouts window which is what we're going to open right now. So we'll hit that settings icon to open the setup callouts window. 
And this is where you're going to check on and check off which materials or parts you would like to receive a call out. This is a very important step, which cannot be skipped or else Keyshot will not give you any call outs in your final CMF document. So definitely make sure to fill this out. All right, up at the top, you can switch to base your callouts on materials or parts. In this case, we'll stick to materials. And then below, you'll see a very similar list to your scene tree. As you check off these materials, Keyshot will assign a callout. So if we go through and we check off everything we need callouts for, it will end up looking like this. And then what you see right here in this viewport is exactly what you'll get in the final output. Now, maybe you need to go back and uncheck a few. You could totally do that and Keyshot will remove that callout. Just be aware that this can mess up the numerical order of your callouts. And if that happens, you have the option of manually numbering these or just using the generate callout numbers button. This will put everything back in order. A couple other settings to look out for. You can choose to enable objects that are not visible to the camera and then those will become unlocked in the scene tree. So in this example, the lining on the inside of the shoe is not visible in this camera view. So it's being hidden in my scene tree. But if I check off this button, then that material becomes available to receive a call out. The call out color opens the color picker so you can choose your call out color. The call out layout switches the way the call outs are organized around your model. And you can see when I flip back and forth between these that the layout changes. So everything is looking good here with my call outs. I can go ahead and close this. And now I'll just send to render as I normally would, but from the CMF tab. And this will give me my CMF document. When everything is done rendering, you'll get a folder with various file types inside. There's a folder for your reference images, a couple files to edit the layout, a final rendered image, but most importantly is the HTML file here, which will compile the callouts, material information, and rendered image into one document. So we have our shoe with those selected callouts that we chose, followed by a table outlining the related material information pulled from the material information manager. It's all neatly wrapped up right here. And this is, of course, the portrait mode. So let's look at landscape. And in this one, the image and table are side by side. So both of these output options will just depend on your personal needs. Now let's go back into Keyshot and take a look at what might be a common workflow with this tool. You just saw that I rendered out my shoe in this lateral camera view, but maybe I need to also render out a bottom view. I can switch my camera then head over to that setup callouts window and see that Keyshot has automatically arranged my selected callouts based on what is now visible to the camera. I could choose if I want to turn a couple of these off, maybe I only need to show the outsole and midsole here. I'll then render this out just the same and this is the final result, a much shorter material list, but that's exactly what I need. Now let's take a look at how we might output this shoe in different colorways. The demo scene provided will come with a small configurator setup. So just open the configurator wizard, drop down to the material ways, and you'll see that right now we're on that all black colorway, uh, but let's switch to lime green. Now I have my lime green shoe here and I need a CMF document for that. So if we look back at the Material Information Manager, we will see that I have already filled out the multi-materials with the appropriate information. So since I've done that and I have already set up my callouts as we saw when I was working with the all black colorway, all I need to do at this point is just send to render. And then while we're at it, let's do the pink colorway too. So I'll go back into the Configurator Wizard, switch to pink, and then just send to render. Now opening both of those final CMF documents and you can see that I have the right material information automatically pulled in. Those colored parts are appropriately filled out with the correct colors. And this is all happening with pretty much zero effort on my end besides the initial setup. Uh, so as long as I have my material information filled out, producing multiple CMF documents is super easy. And that about wraps up everything that you need to know to get started with Keyshot 11's new CMF documentation tool.
So don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this tutorial in the comments section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and a share. Thanks for watching.